Welcome to a special Screencasts.org episode. March 18th marks the anniversary for when Internet Explorer 5 was released. Included in that release was the formative version of the XML HTTP request API. In other words, on March 18th, it's Ajax's birthday. And what better way to celebrate than by building a website that uses Ajax to tell us if it's Ajax's birthday or not? In this episode, we'll be using Sinatra, Hamel, and jQuery. If you're new to any of these, we recommend you check out our introduction screencasts on these topics at screencasts.org. They'll get you up to speed. You may have come across this genre of website before. They're simple websites with a yes or a no in the middle of the page. They answer a question like, is it Christmas? Is it November? Or some other time-sensitive question. Sometimes the pages also have a countdown timer. In this episode, we're going to create isitajaxsbirthday.com with a countdown timer. Below this video is a zip file with the beginnings of our Sinatra application in app.rb with an empty get route for the root URL. You'll notice it requires birthday countdown. If we look in birthday countdown, we have several methods, but we're only going to be using the constructor, is it, and seconds to go. All the other methods are there to help these three methods and are there for readability. The constructor takes in two arguments, month and day, which get cached as birthday month and birthday day. Also, for convenience, instead of repeating time.now all the time, we cache month, day, and year for the current date. In the isIt method, we make sure the current month and birthday month match, as well as the current day and birthday day. The seconds to go method returns an integer of how many seconds we've got left until we celebrate. It uses one of the helper methods called next birthday to help us do that. Examining our downloaded files further, we have a layout in two views, one for when it's Ajax's birthday and one for when it's not. In our layout, we've included jQuery already and left some space to write our jQuery code. Okay, so let's add some logic to our root URL block to show either the yes or the no view. So let's initialize a birthday countdown instance by passing it 3 and 18 for the month and day. Now for the view. We need to pass in either yes or no. Let's implement a method within birthday countdown called toView. If it is the birthday, let's return yes and no if it's not. Here we're using the ternary operator to reduce lines of code. This is a shorthand way of writing an if and else statement. The first value will be returned if the condition is true, and the second if it's false. This is also known as an inline if or conditional operator. Now in our app.rb, in our get route, we can include Hamel countdown to view. Let's start up our application by typing ruby-rubygems app.rb, which will automatically include rubygems. Then, let's visit localhost port 4567 in our browser, and we'll see that the code works. Since today isn't March 18th, it says no. As you can see from the downloaded code, there's a countdown at the bottom of our no view. It's static at the moment, so let's write some jQuery to check if it's Ajax's birthday every second, because we just can't wait. We want to see those seconds count down. Under the Hamel JavaScript filter, we can write our JavaScript. Since we're including this code in the head of our document, we need to trigger some code on ready. Let's use the shorthand dollar sign parentheses. Usually your ready function is going to be an anonymous function containing the code you want to execute. But in this case, we're going to do the same thing on ready that we want to do every second, so we'll pass in the name of our function getUpdate instead of writing an anonymous function. So let's create this getUpdate function and inside it, let's load the contents of the root path into the body element. Then, let's set the timeout for 1000 milliseconds, or one second, to call the getUpdate method. If we refresh our browser window, we'll see the timer update. And that's it, we're all done. Well, almost. If we look at the Resources tab in the Web Inspector, we see that the full page, layout, and view is sent by Sinatra when requested by the Ajax call. This may have some unwanted side effects down the road. All we want to do is send the view with no layout. To solve this, we need to switch off the layout when the request is an XHR request. Sinatra allows you to query the request to see if it's an XHR request by calling XHR question mark on the request object. 
Sinatra allows you to turn off or specify layout files. This is done by setting the layout option. False to disable the layout, or you can pass in the name of the layout as a symbol to enable it. In our case, our layout is named layout.haml, so we set the layout option to layout. Okay, let's restart our Sinatra app and go back to our web inspector. Now we can see all the new requests only have the view part of the markup. Great, and that's it. We're going to post this site up at isitajaxsbirthday.com. Feel free to share it on the run up to Ajax's birthday. Happy birthday, Ajax, and here's to another year of developing awesome dynamic websites. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our RSS feed, follow us on Twitter, and please leave any comments, questions, or suggestions for new screencasts in the comments below. If you like our videos and think your friends, followers, or colleagues would benefit from seeing them, please feel free to share via any of the links below the video. We really appreciate your support. See you next time!